Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Titan Company Limited Q4 FY21 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star than zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. C.K. Venkatraman, Managing Director, Titan Company Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. It is uh, wonderful and also a little strange to be talking to all of you in this manner. Before I start uh, highlighting the performance for the quarter, I would like to pay tribute once again to all those thousands of uh, women and men in various uh, stores of Titan Company, very, very diligently and patiently wearing that shield for much of uh, FY21 and uh, resisting the disease and presenting a very safe environment for the customers of Titan Company. And I would also like to thank the customers of Titan Company and, of course, all the franchisee distributors and the warehouse uh, partners all our partners in the back and all our other partners who helped us cope with this extraordinary situation and, of course, all the employees of Titan Company. I would also like to thank all of you on the call, the investors and analysts who are such well-wishers of the company and keep challenging us on the most important things that we should be delivering. The quarter itself was a fantastic uh, quarter in terms of sales growth. Uh, we outdid our own plans and expectations, which we had shared with you when the year began way back in the month of May. The sales growth in Q4 was uh, exceptionally high, even after discounting for the fact that one fortnight of uh, the base quarter was uh, zero sale, and we had only five fortnights in the base quarter. But even after accounting for that, if you just look at the slide number 35, from a 63% for Tanish to a 10% for Helios to a 28% for I plus to an 8% for the world of Titan, we were crossing the targets that we had set for ourselves for quarter four. And we're very, very happy about it. We believe that we have improved our competitive position in the market serially quarter after quarter. And this quarter you know, represents that. The year uh, FY22 also began well, in a way, continuing the momentum. But, of course, uh, COVID came once again to complicate uh, matters, and therefore it would be a little academic for us to speak about it at all on this uh, call. And I would like to defer that conversation to a more appropriate day in the future. All I would uh, say and assure you at this moment is that, you know, during uh, FY21, we also realized what kind of power we have, you know, on the one hand as a digital organization with substantial digital knowledge and total physical connect on the ground with our customers and how we used it to recover. We also know how many different uh, innovations that we put together in terms of customer acquisition, in terms of cost management, in terms of cash management. And so that entire arsenal is available for all of us to deploy at a more you know, deliberate pace in a more systematic manner to make sure that whatever targets we have taken, we will uh, achieve them in FY22. Now, coming back to the profit performance uh, standalone of uh, FY21, the sales growth was very good at 60%, but for various uh, reasons, the gross margin growth was uh, not uh, commensurate. And... Uh, uh, you know, it's a combination of three or four big ticket things. One is, of course, a much higher share of the jewelry business in the year and in the quarter. And the jewelry business is the lowest gross margin business of the company because of the nature of the business. And that uh, increasing share uh, obviously dipped the uh, overall gross margin profile of the company for the period. And for the gross margin growth was depressed on account of the business mix. The second is that we had uh, uh, two other one-time, one of which is uh, accounting one-time. We had a substantial gain 
in Q4 of FY20 on account of FIFA and all that. We had a loss in FY21. So the combined effect of that was material. The third, of course, was uh, customs duty, which we had spoken about, which got reduced, and we ended up incurring a loss in Q4 of FY21. The last part is the individual gross margins in the businesses and even the category mixes, for example, we sold a lot of coins in Q4 of FY21, including a very large order uh, to the Tamil Nadu government. The, while the studded growth was very, very satisfactory, the, the gold jewelry growth and the overall coin growth was sort of uh, overcompensated for that. Therefore, the product mix within jewelry, the product mix within watches, between watches and wearables, uh, also complicated the matter. And uh, on top of all of this was a dilution in the category gross margin within, within each one of those, which we were aware of for many months, but for reasons of continuing to keep the momentum on the sales growth and increasing our market share for FY21, and also play our proper role and responsibility to our other stakeholders in the system so that the vendors get good volumes, the franchisees get good sales value growth, the salespeople get achieve their targets and earn their incentives. We didn't uh, you know, correct any of those which we knew, um, certainly H2 of FY21, very clearly what was going different in plan. But uh, nevertheless, uh, the quarter ended on an excellent note in terms of sales growth and even profit growth, while the profit growth was not in line with the sales growth and the EBIT expansion that may have been expected did not happen, but the EBIT growth itself was a very handsome um, growth at uh, uh, 35% and a uh, bad growth at uh, 48%. So we're very, very satisfied in the manner in which we ended the year and we began the year. And the current complication, honestly, notwithstanding, because we realized way back, one year back, that uh, you know this is a crisis of such uh, huge proportions and so much out of anybody's control that there is simply no point in fretting about it and wringing your hands. It pays much more to stay calm, confident, confident in the capabilities of the company, the assets on the ground, and of course the commitment and the sheer willpower that the organization has to you know, come out of any challenge that comes its way. So we sure we'll use all that to overcome the current challenge as well and uh, emerge on top in FY22. And what is ex exceptionally gratifying is that the management of cash and the balance sheet became a well-institutionalized uh, process, process in the company, not restricted only to the top team. In fact, uh, I would say, um, you know, CEO minus two level, it has deeply penetrated. Uh, CEO minus two level people talk in terms of uh, cash in terms of balance sheet and therefore that is behind the exceptional cash balance that we are exiting the year with and we're very sure that with the innovative uh, model that we in a way deployed in FY21 which is selling of bullion and then you know increasing the share of gold on lease to you know free up cash is something that we have got a very good grip on today and we will execute it as and when required to the extent required. So I would uh, stop here and uh, thank you once again for all your advice, for all your challenging over the times and all your support. And over to you and your questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, you may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and want to ask a question. The first question is from the line of Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. So hi team, uh, you know, it was uh, a good performance and more importantly, Venkat uh, must personally compliment you for, you know, it was, it was, a, it was an excellent, uh, you know, overview which you actually gave uh, because we were listening to a lot of conference calls, uh, you know, but truly it was, uh, you know, it was a very, very good one actually. Uh, I had a couple of questions actually. Uh, one, uh, you know, on uh, 
uh, you know, in the in the uh, in the first week of April, when you put out the quarterly update, there was a fair bit of a lot of mention about uh, you know, let's say the turnaround in Tamil Nadu as a market, the wedding uh, you know segment, etc. Uh, you know, to the extent it is feasible for you to come in a public conference call, uh, you know, subject to obviously your internal you know competitive uh, you know confidentiality which you need to maintain. Uh, just very curious to understand uh, you know what was this uh, you know thing which you did let's say three or five things uh, you know which resulted in this uh, you know this this trajectory change i'm interested in the trajectory change not about uh, you know one quarter here and there the reason i'm asking this because uh, you know wedding market as an opportunity has been there for uh, you know titan and most of the jewelers for a very long period of time and uh, you know there's been for some reason a uh, few of them which progress and analyst time i have a view uh, you know it has not been necessarily fully uh, you know achieved in the past so just really curious to understand what you did in tn the wedding segment etc uh, which is uh, you know likely leading to a different trajectory currently so that's question number one the second one uh, you know on uh, you know when i look at the historical or the empirical uh, evidences uh, you know it just tells me that uh, when gold price uh, inflates significantly over a period of time and then there is a correction uh, consumers tends to uh, you know even postpone some of their consumption so it's actually leading to a volume surge so just just wanted to pick your brain on uh, an agile brain on kind of so what what at this point in time what you are seeing the consumers are telling you uh, based on the gold price behavior in the last two or three months thank you so i'll take the call um, this is ajay hi uh nice to talk to you although it's peculiar circumstances so manoj uh, two questions first one about the tamil nadu market i think the uh, idea of uh, gaining market share in tn is not a recent uh, piece it has happened over the last couple of years uh, it's a strategic initiative we took it as a test case to see if you do a 360 degree approach to the market uh, can we kind of a connect with the customer more deeply we had a local brand ambassador nayantara has been there we had customized campaigns for that market which seeks to connect with the cultural nuances of the tamil nadu uh, market and the customers uh, two we also had a fair number of network expansion strategy in terms of some of our older gold plus stores of course converted into tanish stores and uh, plus we've been adding a lot of stores in tn so we have a fairly formidable a network presence across many many towns and town classes of tn the third piece is we also recognize that uh, the tn uh, customer is extremely price sensitive when it comes to gold rate and policies on exchange etc because of the nature of the local competition so we realigned our policies for the tn market also accordingly and the fourth piece is uh, in not so much on wedding yes we are doing some work but in tn i think that uh, that frontier and let's say that opportunity still exists on the wedding segment but i would say a lot of regionalization in terms of products which are daily wear and regular wear products uh, which we focused a lot on we are also doing a lot of work on wedding but that is yet to kick in so a 360 approach on a sustained basis over the last two years is what you know and of course a lot of work on the retail Um, retail and customer experience side as well i mean many initiatives taken uh, we strengthened uh, our team there etc so a lot of work that's gone in and that is beginning to yield fantastic results uh, the second question you asked about gold price going up and then correction leading to customers let's say coming into the market yes uh, we have seen that uh, in the last in fact quarter 4 we saw after many quarters grammage growth besides buyer growth across all price segments even the sub 50000 price segment which was sluggish even as late as quarter 3 so across all segments uh, we saw customers and we saw grammage growth as well we also saw some amount of uh, advancing of people buying for weddings etc in anticipation for quarter 1 as well and that continued all the way up to april you know as late as uh, uh, 20th of april so yes we have seen that and that's that's added to a good good uh, sales thank you ajoy that was extremely comprehensive but just one follow up if i may and that's that's the only question i have uh, is that uh, the the tamil nadu experience of the learning that you had a strategy then you had a tactics then you ended up implementing it uh, you know and then you had results also uh, you know do you think there are a lot of learnings from a playbook point of view to be applied in some of the other large 
uh, you know, gold high, heavily in next markets in India, rather rather I, I mean states. Yes, true. Uh, uh, we we have been applying some parts of the playbook in other markets like West Bengal, uh, Bihar, uh, you know, even parts of uh, Maharashtra, uh, but not as comprehensively as we've done it in TN. Uh, and we have a plan to ensure we do that a lot more. In fact, uh, you know, we we are seeing. Um, uh, taking on different approaches in different markets and doing it in a 360 degree manner is what is actually gaining us uh, good results. So doing all, all the engines firing simultaneously. Yes, we see that as an opportunity and we hope to take it forward. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. All the best. Take care. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abneesh Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, congrats on uh, good numbers. My question is, uh, when I see ad spend, it is uh, it has increased only 4%, uh, while uh, revenue growth has been extremely strong. So has the competitive intensity gone down in jewelry, especially from the larger uh, players and on the smaller regional players because of the way pandemic is extremely challenging situation? Are you getting uh, from uh, ground that uh, some of the players are uh, exiting? So if you could comment on competitive intensity, both, both from uh, larger players and uh, smaller, uh, uh, even un unorganized players. Uh, yes, Abnish, I'll, I'll take that call, uh, Ajay here. So uh, competitive intensity actually from the larger national players has only gone up significantly. Uh, and I'm sure after uh, the IPO of Kalyan, even one more player would be rich with uh, more fund, uh, flush with funds. So competitive intensity has gone up significantly on all fronts. Uh, in fact, uh, we've had to do some amount of uh, aggressive pursuit of market share in Q4, uh, which has also in a way, we've, we've given away some margin to gain some share. Uh, from local jewelers, yes, they have been impacted significantly. Uh, I don't recall of any significant player having vacated or exited the market. But certainly what we are seeing is the, the, the tailwind of, uh, you know, people moving away from smaller local jewelers to the larger national ones continues uh, as a consequence of this uh, situation, like in any other uh, disruptive situation in the past. Having said that, there are several regional players and uh, standalone local players who are very strong and who continue to do well. So it is a mixed bag. I can't paint it in one go. But yes, the, if I were to classify it, the larger national players and organized players and the stronger regional players uh, have gained. And perhaps, uh, you know, some of the unorganized and smaller players might have lost. But, uh, but let me also share this, that in quarter four, the market itself has also been good. It's not that we are the only ones who clocked in growth. Uh, many other players have also clocked in growth. We may have clocked in higher growth uh, because of the multiple strategies at play, uh, but I think the market itself was good. On marketing spend, we didn't hold back any marketing spend in quarter four. We have optimized. We have done a lot of work between digital and physical, uh, I mean, ATL marketing and BTL activities. Uh, and therefore, we didn't compromise, but the marketing spend across uh, larger players has actually gone up significantly and their share of voice has gone up significantly. Sure. My second and last question is uh, uh, in Q4 and even in Q3, you have done exceedingly well in jewelry. So there was some level of pent up demand and marriage season was very strong. So if you could uh, update on marriage uh, uh, demand in the FY22, how things are. Uh, more importantly, in the current uh, scenario, which states uh, still your stores are open? Some business update, if you can give on the current scenario. And are you sharing any guidance for uh, either uh, this year or the long term? So on the marriage uh, thing, I think the wedding, uh, you're right, there was pent up demand for wedding. Uh, a lot of weddings took place and a lot of purchasing for weddings took place in quarter three and quarter four. And in fact, was continuing to take place in the month of April as well, even as late as 20th of April. So we have been seeing a good uh, growth in that, that segment. Uh, our uh, pre this wave two hitting us, we were extremely bullish on uh, 
a strong wedding season for quarter one, uh, both pending as well as fresh, many, many good dates. And uh, in fact, we also launched in mid-March, I think we started the Riva campaign. And we also had a major uh, PR activity around that uh, in the first week of April. So all guns blazing with the Riva campaign and uh, it's almost nearing its uh, logical end right now. And maybe we will pick that thread up later. So we are bullish on wedding. Uh, current year, current month, it's too early to talk. Uh, we were growing very well, uh, as I was saying, up to the middle of the first fortnight and even up to the third third week of uh, April. Uh, obviously, with the closures and lockdowns, etc., all over the place, that is fast uh, coming down. So we, we may still end April at a marginal growth of uh, over April 2019. Uh, but nowhere near the kind of growth that we were aiming for or we were clocking in the first quarter. I, we don't have a guidance for the year or the long run right now. Okay, sir. Uh, that's all for me. Thanks a lot. Good. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prasad Deshmukh from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening and congrats on good set of numbers. Uh, so, a uh, couple of questions. One, uh, in your initial assessment, how many stores are now impacted as uh, as a result of lockdown? And uh, also, in terms of production, is it still going, or production of jewellery, is it still going on or it's like complete halt right now? Uh, I'll, since the question is directed towards jewellery, as I understood, I'll take the call yeah. again, Ajay here. Uh, I think as on yesterday, we had about, 50% of our stores were shut and 50% were open. It's it's a dynamic situation. Uh, you know, we have to go as per what's happening. And in some places and many markets, we have also taken proactive calls. If we see tremendous risks uh, on the ground in terms of constraints, etc., we are taking the call to shut those stores uh, in those uh, and this is happening dynamically uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And, and we will continue to do so till things become safer. The second piece was on on the production. No production is still on. Uh, this time around, manufacturing constraints have not been imposed in any of the states. Yes, the, the rate of production has slowed down because we had to ensure safe production across our units as well as vendor units. And uh, in fact, we've engaged deeply with all the vendor community and their carriers and bench carriers, et cetera, to ensure they're following this and they understand the importance of prevention. So certainly the rate of production has slowed down, but nothing is shut as of now. Uh, but of course, if there is a situation in any particular unit, uh, you know, uh, we may shut it down uh, for the interim as and when things develop. As of now, nothing sure. is shut. Sure. And the uh, last question then, um, uh, I know you just said uh, we will not be able to give any guidance uh, for FY22. So, uh, uh, safe to assume uh, you would probably uh, come out with some uh, uh, some number towards it uh, once the situation normalizes, or is is it like a completely dynamic situation right now? And it's not on the agenda uh, at this point. Actually, Prasad, let me come in here. You know, we had originally scheduled an investor conference on the, if I remember right, on the seventh or eighth of May, and we had to reschedule it because of uh, you know the dynamic situation, and now. I don't know when exactly we'll be able to do it. And this is what we would have covered in that particular uh, conference. And we will anyway still plan to do it. I think sometime uh, in June, we plan to do it, if I'm right. And by then, hopefully, the you know the air will be clear and we'd be able to take a view on FY22, whatever uh, you know, the situation is. And at that time, we will share this. Got it, got it. Thanks a lot, sir. All the best. OK. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Chunjunwala from Rare Enterprises. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Congrats on a good result. Now, I would like to know why you have cut the dividend. You have 3,000 crores of cash. And until April 15, 20 years, your sales will also saying are very good. So I don't understand the reason why the Honorable Board has decided to prune the dividend. Oh, I don't know what you're creating this cash for, and what are you going to use it for? Uh, no, actually, we didn't actually think we were pruning the dividend, uh, like this, you know. No, got, last year, uh, gave half, this year, gave four rupees. Yeah, last year, four. It's also confidence in your business, and you're carrying 3,000 crores of cash. Yeah, yeah. 
ஒரு <laughs> we went way above what we ever given so as possible so what, what is what is the even policy you declare it as a percentage it is, declared. It is being declared as i speak it will be uh, on our website very soon okay we have a policy we are talking about a range on out so that is coming out and this so is really is at the top of that range i mean you still haven't formulated a policy no 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 we have a policy but we are now more uh, we are talking about it we are giving you a range also as to what we so are what is that policy subo sorry what is the range of payouts you are declaring well we are de- we are we are talking 25 to 40 okay yeah so donating for a cash generating business like your it's a very very miserly percentage you know in this time you are declaring the point of view rakesh it is as dividend yeah it, it's it's the point of view but let's also not forget one thing the cash that we are generating is also because we are doing a lot of gold on these right if the gold on these for some reason were to be curbed by the by reserve bank or anybody else just because gold imports are going up we are going we to can't be back keep, to that reason you can't keep to me your to be careful we need to be conscious of the fact that this cash generation but for that you can't be holding cash for a lifetime you know you're holding cash for a lifetime you can tell me for a lifetime that the policy can be reversed Anyway, it's no, no, the no, point no. of view of your board. It's my point of view as a minority shareholder. I think you are being totally unfair to minority shareholders. That's my view, my, my opinion, and my firm opinion. And it's not within the ethos of the Tata Group. Let me tell you. Thanks. We'll take that as an input, Rakesh. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Sachdeva from HSBC. Please go ahead. <clears throat> uh hi good evening everyone and thank you so much for taking my question congratulations on great set of numbers so my my first question is you know uh you know on jewelry uh, because if i look at till q3 or even q2 as the whole recovery was happening i would assume the growth was led by more tier 2 tier 3 towns <clears throat> and a lot of margin marginal area was also being added there and uh in q4 obviously for delivering that kind of number i would assume that metro markets which were sluggish earlier perhaps would have come back to growth and why i'm asking this question is because lockdowns is not uniform some cities are more impacted some are less so so in that sense if i were to look at the next quarter and the base effects uh, can you give us some regional color like west was still recovering and west was more impacted last year and when north was good how should we think about this recovery phase in the light of large metros versus tier 2 tier 3 towns some some understanding would be really helpful ajoy <laughs> yeah uh, hi amit uh, so you're right uh, it's been a differential uh, recovery and growth uh, let me say that tier 2 tier 3 towns continue to lead the growth uh, so the the pattern of tier 2 tier 3 being faster recovery or higher recovery and higher growth compared to metro towns continued as a flavor and it continued even in quarter 4 uh, mm-hmm. if i were to give you a flavor the growth uh, if i see in quarter 4 from a buyer perspective because that's a useful you know customer uh, facing data uh, it has been led by east uh, followed by south uh, then north and then west west uh, has certainly been most impacted and it continues to be as we know maharashtra taking the hit bombay and delhi have been sluggish relative to the rest of the <clears throat> market uh, in the east if i look at it uh, states like uh, bihar and jharkhand uh, orissa 
uh, even northeast uh, and then west bengal have led and in the south it's really tn which has um, powered ahead strongly uh, for us at least uh, with karnataka following after that uh, punjab and uh, you know punjab and chandigarh were also decent in the north as was up uh, um, i must say up was following a similar trend as bihar and jharkhand west it's been a tough situation bombay has been the worst impacted uh, briefly in between maharashtra started doing well especially up country maharashtra but in the last uh, several weeks uh, it's taken a hit uh, and gujarat also has been fluctuating in its performance mp has been doing well so this gives sure. you a flavor on and i think this may how it will proceed ahead will depend on how the kind of you know disease uh, is, is spreading out and we think what is happening now to maharashtra will happen to orissa later and so on and so forth so we'll play by market and we are anticipating sure. different peaking in different markets sure no that's really very helpful ajoy uh, so can i can i sort of see that well maharashtra is most impacted but this has not yet recovered so although uh, the crisis is unfolding if it is not widespread crisis like uh, like last year like where there's a lockdown all over and all those things you would probably think that you could still escape any hard landing of growth is it a fair assumption or or is it still very uncertain very uncertain uh, i mean the situation is evolving on a day to day basis and uh, sure. uh, you know we think every market at some point in time will get impacted it's a question of timing um, and we are not able to predict the person you are speaking with has put your call on hold please stay on the line i yeah sorry i was put on hold by mistake um, okay uh, anyway I, am i audible yes yes ajoy yes. very very audible thank you okay so uh, yeah as i was saying the timing is going to vary we think every market at some point will get impacted uh, it looks like you know and the problem that i was saying is that even maharashtra let's say is likely to come out fast but you know it's it looks like based on the latest announcements that it's likely to remain shut down till 15th of may and then we are hope for whatever best happens is very unpredictable and very difficult to give you a sense sure no this is very very helpful again that perspective and at second if i may ask you know like a last time i asked that i i noticed that you know uh, you announced last time on trunk sales of tanera because why i'm i'm also asking is is a is a business which is still in some sort of pilot phase and a lot of uh, economics are being tested so i i would assume that lot of trunk sales happened Uh, of Tanera last quarter. What was the experience, and has it given you confidence? Uh, what the business model could shape, or is just still too early days? But I assume that some of it is well received in some markets. Can you give us some color of of the aggressive plan you had on trunk sales and taking Tanera deeper down to tier two, tier three, to to existing Tanish franchises? Uh, the trunk shows of Tanera have been very, very. Uh... Sorry, Rajiv, you are on the call, right? Sorry, one second. Now I'll take this uh, question. The trunk sales of Tanera have been very, very encouraging in the smaller mm-hmm. towns, in uh, cities like Patna and all that. We have a pretty ambitious uh, plan for Tanera over the next few years, and in FY22. In specifics, I will, you know, we will share it in the uh, investor conference in May that I spoke of. But overall, our uh, Uh, you know, we also have two franchise stores now. I mean, over the last six months, we have uh, got into franchising with Canera. Sure. Companies who are excited to get into this business is growing by the day because everyone is so, uh, you know, convinced about the customer value proposition that we have uh, established, and uh, in a way, are very clear that we're going to do some kind of a tanishk in the ethnic wear business with Canera. Uh, So the outlook is very, very good. We are very, very positive. More news about it in concrete terms in June. Okay, that's that's very good to hear, uh, Bankar. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, Anand. That's all for me. Yeah. Thank you. I request to all the participants, please restrict the two question for participants. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Aditya Soman from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. 
Hi, uh, good evening. Um, so two questions for me. Firstly, uh, a date on how uh, Golden Harvest is uh, progressing. Uh, I think you'd indicated uh, in the previous call that you're also trying some short-term schemes. Uh, any any update on that? And uh, the second question, uh, can you also give us, uh, I, I may have missed this, but can you also give us a sense of the customer growth for each of the verticals, uh, uh, watches, uh, jewelry, and items? On on Golden Harvest, uh, Amit, uh, the, sorry, not Amit, uh, Aditya. Uh, the sales to Golden Harvest uh, has been uh, pretty robust. In fact, we've seen a good contribution for the year, 21% versus 21% of last year as well. However, in the month of, from the month of Feb, March onwards, and going into quarter one, the contribution, understandably so, has come down to 15% because enrollments in quarter one were not there and therefore the impact of that is going to be faced now and we have planned for it to be a lower um, let's say sales through golden harvest uh, set quarter uh, going ahead having said that uh, the enrollments uh, have been good uh, both in quarter three and quarter four and even in uh, you know until the shutdown started happening so that augurs well for the future uh, your second question was on customer growth. I'll tell you jewelry and then maybe the others would uh, be able to share. Uh, on jewelry for the quarter, the overall uh, buyer growth for quarter four uh, stood at 39% over last year. Of course, we must factor in that last year there was a slight base effect. So this 39 is not really reflective. Maybe, you know, you, I would take it down by about 10, 12%. Uh, so it will still be a healthy 25% plus uh, of buyer growth in jewelry in quarter four. But I'll leave to the others to respond on watches. Hi, uh, this is Suparna. I wanted to uh, talk about the watches. So in watches, as uh, as being published, uh, the WOT uh, growth has been around 8% in quarter four. And uh, similarly, Helios growth has also been good. Uh, most of it is uh, uh, is on the is reflecting the quantity. The value is reflecting the quantity. Unlike in the first, uh, in the second and the third quarters, when there was a, a large increase in average price point, uh, that had kind of evened out in uh, in the uh, quarter four, and that we saw across the channels, trade channel, LFS channel, as well as e-com, as well as Group was uh, uh, there wasn't a very big spike on the average UCT. Average UCTs remained more or less, and we whatever growth we got was on the uh, buyers. Uh, no, thank you. Very clear. Uh, just one follow up on the uh, golden harvest. Uh, is there? Uh, uh, can you give us a sense of what proportion of uh, recruitment uh, uh, you are doing online, or if that's even possible? Thank you. So, uh, so on jewelry, I can say that uh, recruitment of customers online has been phenomenal. Uh, we have seen for the year, if I were to look at, uh, between online and Omni, and Omni is very important in jewelry because of the high ticket values, uh, we have seen a 4x of last year in terms of sheer business, uh, and therefore it, it's exploding and it continues to be a very big driver. We expect it to we be expect to drive it even further, so, uh, you know, um, more than double it again, and we would like to chase that kind of ambition. On watches, perhaps Superna might be able to share. Sorry, my question was also on Golden Harvest recruitment online. If, if that can be done uh, online, or uh, it, uh, it has yeah. to be done in store. Okay, so, sorry, I missed that. Uh, Golden Harvest, yes, can now be completely done online. Uh, through the app and uh, we earlier had some challenges on eKYC that has been sorted out uh, uh, and therefore we can now do completely online as well and we've had a good response. We think this can really grow dramatically. We have to push this engine a lot more uh, to make people aware of it, etc. So yes, very, very happy with that and it's happening fast. But the base was low, so it, it's starting from zero virtually. No, understand very clear. Thanks a lot. Thank you.
The next question is from the line of Teja Shah from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, uh, if you can quantify impact of import duty cut in the quarter on uh, jewelry segment margins. Hello. Yeah, there was a, there was an impact on that. Uh, it will be there in the first quarter as well. But uh, in the overall context of things, it's not as material as uh, something that I would want to quantify. Yes, there was an impact. Okay. Uh, second question pertains to Caratlin in a year where the online was uh, picking up across consumption categories. Uh, we have made a very decent expansion on footprint there. So how should we think about Caratlin going forward? Will it be only strategy or offline stores will be a very sizable proportion of growth going forward for that brand? Uh, so Venkat, you'll answer or you want me to take this? I can do that. Actually, over the last uh, four or five years, it's become very clear that Caratlin's growth lies in a combined strategy, and uh, it's an omni strategy actually, because there is a lot of uh, discovery that happens on the site, and the handshake and the final, you know, product purchase happens in the store, and that's because the ticket size opportunities, even in the young women segment, uh, the ticket size opportunities are large. And at uh, you know forty thousand and fifty thousand rupees, the customer would prefer to look at the products and buy rather than just look at an image and buy. So to that extent, uh, uh, not having a retail uh, footprint expansion would not capitalize on that very large opportunity. So it will be pushing both the buttons simultaneously to the hilt. That would be the strategy for Caratlin. Sure, but the journey of uh, here is slightly reverse. That an online brand is going offline. So will it still be online heavy revenue model uh, with offline being experience center or fulfillment center or it can, it, it can even on revenue form, it can equalize going forward? Yeah. Having said that, if I were to look at uh, our quarter four numbers for studied buyers per se, uh, it's, it's been a fair, uh, you know, it's, it's been a fair mix across uh, all the other markets. I cannot say that the uh, you know there is a regional dispersion which is kind of evident uh, i would certainly believe that uh, in because smaller towns uh, have led the growth for us this year and typically studied ratio in those markets is lower and uh, than than the larger metro markets that has played a big role otherwise i don't see any trend which says that studied uh, Sales have been low. In fact, the buyer growth on studded has been leading that of plain gold. Buyer growth, okay, customer growth. Uh, it is the ticket value in plain because of gold price that has taken the value growth in plain higher. So, I, there is no uh, discernible trend of uh, you know differential growth uh, from the total sales growth. Whatever I said, shared for all the uh, different states holds good even for uh, starting. Got it, got it. And my second question is on jewelry margins. Uh, does the business uh, have a fair bit of operating leverage or it's largely, a, a, I mean, the fixed cost structure is pretty high in this business. I mean, not so much from this quarter perspective, but when we look at next year, uh, I mean, when you have very high growths, uh, with the cost savings that you've done this year, uh, would it be fair to assume a reasonable amount of gross of EBIT margin expansion over here, or it will broadly remain in that 12-13% range? So, uh, so let's put it this way: that amongst all the businesses, the jewelry business has the lowest amount of fixed costs as compared to all the others. Low margin, low fixed cost. So the operating leverage is that way much lower compared to, let's say, watches or either. Having said that, because the scale is substantial, there are certain costs which are which can kick in from operating leverage, uh, for example, marketing costs or, let's say, employee costs, etc. So those are costs which we have actually uh, uh, looked at very, very sharply in the current year and also other fixed costs. Uh, to that extent, therefore, we've got, got some benefits and we hope to reap those benefits in the future year. But in terms of uh, what the EBIT margin will look like, 
the the challenges here are difficult we, we would not be able to give you a guidance but i just want to give you a flavor that there are constant pressures on gross margins because of competitive intensity which is happening across various markets and uh, because fulfillment is uh, not the only role that the store would play the store would certainly play the role of uh, showcasing and uh, persuading and convincing the customer from early stage to the later stage in the purchase uh, journey so it's an integral part because if it is a fulfillment center then we need we don't need retail we can be in the third floor of a commercial property as opposed to in the main area of a mall you know so the retailing costs uh, will kick in and that's why it's it's retailing and not warehouse not for sure Uh, very helpful. And last, just one follow-up. Uh, gold on lease emphasis has been talked about in, in, in the release today. So, is it a tactical move for the year, or is it a going forward strategic from uh, as a, as a key part of our procurement strategy? You're talking about the uh, you know the bullion sale aspect of it. Uh, no, gold on lease has uh, has been uh, called out as uh, no, there's a renewed emphasis there. Yeah, yeah. No, gold on lease has been central to the growth of the jewelry division. ever since uh, 2000 or 2001 when we you know got it into our system and uh, a good pot purchase which is essentially the purchases we make from customers through the exchange program or the outright jewelry that share versus the gold on lease share in a way determines the capital employed in the business and keeps us asset light and returns a certain you know very attractive level of capital I and mean, then return on capital employed so to that extent the continuous management of that is critical to you know the titan company's uh, balance sheet and performance and that's the angle to that there nothing more thanks that's all from my side thank you very much i request to all the participants please restrict to two question per participant the next question is from the line of ashish desai from mk global please go ahead Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is on uh, studded jewelry. You highlighted the uh, growth trends for jewelry across markets. Uh, could you also share? Uh, I mean, the sl- slower growth in studded uh, is it a feature across markets, or is it more due to the sluggishness in some of your key markets like Maharashtra, Delhi, etc.? yeah i will just share with you yes certainly the mix there are two factors at play there is a mix of markets and then there is the growth across markets now if i look at mix of markets you are right a uh, bombay delhi uh, which typically has a much higher studded mix for us uh, those markets being a little bit on the back foot uh, in last year and last quarter has has played a role our main goal is to ensure that we continue to grow market share and go towards our ambition that we had set out maybe yes a year uh, has gone by which has kind of held us back but our ambition continues to be that high and we see tremendous headroom for market share gain so to that extent we would rather invest that money back into the market back into the network and back into uh, inventory etc to ensure that we are able to continue to grow aggressively and maybe maintain profitability over a period of time got it got it if i may squeeze just one small one last i mean just wanted to know your aspirations for carrotly in margins that's it from me thanks and all the best thank you for coming here you nothing to share at the moment on the carrotly in margin we will talk about it in our june conference perhaps thank you Ladies and gentlemen, requesting you to stick to two questions per participant. If time permit, please come back in the question queue for a follow-up question. The next question is from the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just wanted to like check uh, what has been the learning uh, from FY21 on the impact of store closure. Is demand only postponed that it comes back as store opens and life normalizes, or do you see do you see any demand destruction? and would you say that uh, the consumer behavior is different in case of watches and like there is actual demand destruction as you not seen any pent up demand in that category 
that was one and second one was uh, what was the contribution of wedding and high value shared jewelry in fy21 versus fy20 and where are you versus your market share aspirations in these in these two segments let me give you a larger view on on this subject and then ajay can speak uh, there after on the specific question that you asked so while uh, the products that we sell are reasonably high ticket categories and what you may generally consider as considered purchases some of them and even in jewelry they are also linked to events even impulse to some extent you know for example all our watch stores in the malls whether it's aili or the world of fashion or fast track or even in a linking road 100 feet road in bangalore there's a fair amount of young people who walk around in that area and in a way they are not in particular search of a particular product but because the store is exciting it is inviting they go in and buy or there is a birthday that is happening in the month of april and so on but there is an event but it even passes and the store is shut when the birthday is happening and uh, i doubt if that purchase will be postponed to let's say late may when the store actually opens but the birthday and the event and that the magic of the day has passed so to some extent that sale is not going to come back in jewelry i would think maybe the majority certainly uh, of the sale is uh, in a way considered purchase because of the nature of the category as well as the ticket size and it's like and especially if weddings don't happen they get postponed but if weddings happen and the stores are closed that sale may not come back so it's is not an easy full kind of answer but i think by and large we are okay as a company as opposed to like like an apparel company for example which would be far more impacted because of the nature of the category as well as the ticket size of the category if the time passes it becomes lost sale ajay now you can tell yeah to to add to venkat's point uh, we saw last year in especially let's say the months of june july we saw many missed milestone celebrations coming back to us maybe because we had planned as venkat said for the jewelry during their uh, birthday or anniversary and so we saw a spike in june july but thereafter it settled down to what it was and weddings for sure uh, your your second question was on the contribution or growth of wedding can you just repeat that i i yeah, yeah. so um, like wedding and high value stretch well we were the contribution to sales in fy21 versus fy20 and uh, where are you what's your market share expression do you still see a lot of uh, leg room for uh, market share expansion in these two segments which have been the like which you like aspire to grow in yeah so so in terms of contribution uh, if i look at wedding it may seem like uh, for fy21 we were same as last year 23% uh, last year and this year however if i were to knock off the impact of coins and then look at the contribution on the jewelry part of it there is clearly a 1% improvement there uh, with a 2% improvement which we saw in quarter four quarter four was 24% this year versus 22% last year contribution and fy21 has been 25% versus 24% so there's a 1% but we are still way off our most jewelers actually see 50 to 60% contribution from wedding so we still have a lot lot of headroom uh, not withstanding the fact that we sell a lot of everyday adornment uh, jewelry as well on high value study uh, the growth has been decent in the second half i must say uh, earlier we are seeing a very depressed scenario in terms of uh, you know what what is the contribution uh, it has certainly come back to what it was uh, last year and in fact uh, for the year it is the same contribution of around 10% over last year as well as this year thanks to a, a good action on the second half opportunity is high especially if you ask me on solitaire uh, where we are uh, growing rapidly and the opportunity is really huge and milestones are very important and and we are very well placed to kind of go after that on the very high value started uh, you know i would say between the 2 lakhs to 10 lakhs space the opportunity is uh, richer for us about 10 lakhs there are many other constraints like pan card and other things which start getting into play and uh, you know those those are things which are still a little unless those things improve but between the 2 to 10 lakhs we, i we certainly see a lot of opportunity uh, for high value study as well yeah that's it from my side thanks sir
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Gandhi from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, if you look at the gold on lease, it's nearly double that of a typical year and probably three times that of FY19 or 18. Just wanted to understand what are the underpinnings of the decisions uh, that you go through, uh, which kind of dictates the maneuvering of a sourcing in a certain direction. So, so do you want to answer that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, see, actually what we would want to do as much as possible, uh, and I'm going back in time, uh, uh, seven, eight years back, before the, the curves yeah. came on gold on lease at all. We used to source more than 70% of our gold on gold on lease. Two reasons. One is, of course, the cost was lower. So second, it was a natural hedge. Therefore, any impact on financials on a quarter-on-quarter basis was actually minimum. Okay. Third, of course, was the fact that in those days, it was also not very easy hedging in India. Then, if you remember, we had the, the curves which came in, uh, in 2013 and 14, and, and then we had no option but to explore doing more and more of the uh, uh, hedging uh, here because we, we were not allowed to to uh, uh, buy gold on lease, right? So we had to do that. And that, in a way, started developing uh, its own uh, uh, process, et cetera. And we, we've also brought, came into a level where we were, we were not worse off from a cost perspective also. Having said that, uh, we still believe gold on lease is, is, is possibly the best way of buying gold. Uh, as I said, the volatility in margin, clearly, the people valuations, all of that, it is still the lowest, and and therefore we would prefer to do it. It does generate a lot of cash also, as you can see now, the 3,000 plus crores of cash that we talked about is a result of that. So we would therefore focus as much as possible to, to get back to that same level of uh, gold on lease as we used to do in the past. Well, uh, that I that I understand. I'm just looking, let's say, FY18 to till date, right? The wallet, uh, the all these issues that we had were historical. FI 18 to 21. What has happened like during that period was that the exchange gold, you know, our exchange programs have become extremely popular from uh, 2017 onwards, okay? And and that contributed a lot to gold akin to be buying it on spot. This year, we, we went ahead and actually disposed of some bullion and resorted to buying gold on this. And that's the, that's the difference that we are talking about here. So, the gold, the gold exchange program has actually is continuing in its popularity. It is still contributing a substantial amount of the gold that we procure. But what we are doing is also swapping it to get as much gold on these as possible. No, fair. Thanks, thanks a lot for that. Just one uh, thing. So if I consider gold on lease as this low-cost debt and hence part of the capital employed because anyway, this 3,000 crores cash cannot necessarily be used for dividends or whatever, uh, at least largely. Uh, uh, is it an obnoxious assumption that we as an analyst uh, community actually, might... Actually, it, 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 uh, each analyst looks at it differently. Uh, the reason we keep uh, uh, taking uh, gold on lease as a, as a payable in a way is because that's how it's traditionally been. Okay, it, it's more of a supplier credit as uh, and that's how we've been treating it. Uh, but, but yes, each analyst possibly takes it differently. Thank you very much. Sorry to interrupt you, Mr. Gandhi. The next question is from the line of Percy Pantati from IIFL. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, just uh, trying to understand your underlying performance for this quarter in the jewelry division. There were a couple of uh, one-offs. One was the customs duty and uh, one which is across all divisions, of course, is the uh, reversal of the employee uh, compensation cuts with retrospective effect from May. So uh, your uh, reported margins of 10.9% in the jewelry business, if I uh, just want to look at the underlying performance and uh, remove the one-offs for the quarter, these two one-offs which I spoke about, what would the margins be in that case? I just wanted to know that. Well, see, we won't be giving you those numbers here. Okay. Um, we have, I think, explained to you what the uh, basic reason uh, uh, or rather, the, the, why the margin was lower than what it traditionally would have been. And that too, particularly based on the top line that we've achieved. But we've, we've mentioned basically two major reasons. One is the mix. 
Okay, the standard ratio is still much, much lower than what it used to be in the past. The coin ratio is substantially higher than what it is in the past. So fundamentally, mix itself is an issue. On top of that, we also said that um, we have been uh, looking at, at uh, gaining share rather than focusing so much on margin. So to that extent, our focus has been to, to gain share in a year where um, we thought this is the best thing to do. Um, so, so that should explain your, your question. We can't give you anything more than this. Okay. Sub question to this, uh, in an earlier uh, question, I think someone mentioned that uh, there would be some amount of custom duty hit in Q1 as well. So didn't understand why that would be the case because I thought this is a one-time uh, correction of custom duty in the February budget and you would have accounted for it completely, uh, whatever inventory you held as of 1st of February would have got marked down in this quarter. Yeah, firstly, we can't mark it down because our NRV is still higher than the cost. Okay, and therefore we can only go as and when it gets consumed. Oh, I see. Okay, we can't do that. Yeah. We can't do from accounting as standard perspective, and therefore it, it does play out till this, this that stock gets consumed. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, that's all from me. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time constraint, that was the last question for today. I will now hand the conference over to Mr. C. K. Venkatraman for closing comments. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, once again for for the uh, exceptional and the probing questions uh, every time. And till we meet again, uh, goodbye. Thank you very much. On behalf of Titan Company.